Last year, I did a full review of the Fitbit Charge 3, and one of my biggest disappointments was the lack of the SpO2 sensor working. They had the hardware, but they never enabled it to assess your sleep quality during the night. Garmin fitness trackers and smartwatches have been supporting this for quite a long time. So when I heard about the recent software update that enables the SpO2 sensor on all the Fitbit devices, I was really excited to test this out. It took a long time for it to finally come, but I'm really happy that it's released. So are these blood oxygen sensors actually accurate? Do they detect the entire duration of your entire sleep, unlike Garmin watches? Well, let's find out in this video. For those who don't know what an SpO2 sensor is or a blood oxygen reading on your fitness tracker, basically what it does is it assesses the amount of oxygen that is absorbed in your blood. If you have a low saturation of oxygen in your blood, it's possible that you might have sleep apnea or some kind of sleep condition that prevents you from properly getting oxygen or, or actually uh, breathing during your sleep. So there's one major difference between Fitbit and Garmin's SpO2 hardware. Fitbit detects your relative SpO2, whereas the Garmin and other types of fitness trackers will detect your actual SpO2 percentage. So this is a very important dis distinction to make before we dive into the results. The first thing I'm really happy about is that it actually tracks the full duration of your sleep, unlike some of Garmin's watches. Some of Garmin's fitness trackers and watches only track four hours of your sleep, which can be very disappointing. So at least the Fitbit sensor kind of tracks your entire start and end time. I want to be clear, not all Garmin devices only detect four hours of sleep. The newest iterations, such as the Vivo Active 4S can detect the entire night's sleep worth of SpO2 data. One of the things I noticed using Garmin watches is that if you enable the SpO2 sensor, the blood oxygen saturation readings, it definitely affects your battery life. And surprisingly, when I compared this to the Fitbit Charge 3, I did not see any real impact in battery life. My guess is that Fitbit is using a relatively weaker SpO2 hardware sensor compared to Garmin or better sleep tuner. This makes me less confident in Fitbit's results. So I have all these devices that I'm gonna to use to compare the accuracy of the SpO2 sensor on each device. I use the better sleep tuner, which has been very accurate and actually used as the benchmark in terms of SpO2 tracking. Secondly, I did use the Garmin Vivo Smart 4, which only tracks about four hours of sleep. And lastly, I also compared it to the Loki Ring Sleep Monitor, which also has been very accurate. All these other devices actually detect your percentage level in terms of your SpO2, whereas the Fitbit series only track your relative SpO2 changes. If you want to learn more about these devices, I cover all of them in with in-depth reviews on my YouTube channel, so definitely check it out. So I don't want to waste your time. I'm going to get to the conclusion right away. I'm going to tell you that Fitbit's results were actually very disappointing. Let me explain why. I just want to give you a quick warning. There's going to be a lot of metrics displayed from each individual SpO2 tracker. If you're not interested in looking at the details and the metrics of all these trackers, I recommend just skipping to the next section where I just summarize Fitbit's results. So this is Fitbit's estimated oxygen variation. And as you can see, right at the beginning, there's a high spike. It actually surpasses that line, and that shows that there was a high variation in your blood oxygen saturation, which could mean some sort of sleep apnea event. You stop breathing, for example, could be a possible outcome of that. Now, the funny thing is that this result is actually from someone who has not been diagnosed with sleep apnea. In fact, that person has a proper sleep, has no complaints about sleep apnea or anything like that. So that spike might just be an anomaly and it will look at my results and we'll compare that and see what it looks like. So here are my results. As you can see, I don't go above the high threshold. So that means I don't have a high oxygen variation. This is very misleading based on what I've captured on other devices such as, such as the Better Sleep Tuner and the Loki Ring Sleep Monitor. I believe those devices are properly representing my sleep apnea. Just have a look at my stopped breathing events as reported by Better Sleep Tuner. You can tell that I definitely have some sort of sleep apnea unlike Fitbit's reports. And looking at Loki's ring sleep monitor, you can see the yellow red lines. That's where I'm having sleep apnea events where my blood oxygen saturation has gone down. So this is next day's results from the Fitbit Charge 3 in terms of the relative SpO2. And as you can tell, there hasn't been any much change. And it's, very, it's really hard to decipher what is actually happening here. Do I have sleep apnea events? Is there something wrong with my blood oxygen variation? As you can tell by the graph, there's obviously some variation in my blood oxygen. However, I'm never going over the high threshold, which is very confusing. Here's my final report on day three. Feel free to pause this video and just have a look at the data for yourself. And as you can tell, again, there hasn't been much information that I can decipher from Fitbit's information, 
but sleep, better sleep tuner is really giving some useful information specifically if you look at the stop breathing events based on what side you're sleeping so if i sleep on my back i seem to, i seem to be more prone to getting a lot more stop breathing events this information is very useful because based on the implementation of better it's on your head it can actually tell you how which way you're sleeping and then it can help you assess where you're getting all the sleep apnea events and for a quick comparison with Garmin devices, I added the Vivo Smart 4s, four hours of SpO2 tracking, and that obviously reports a big dip in my SpO2. As I mentioned before, Fitbit is actually detecting the relative change in your blood oxygen saturation. So when you have a high variation, such as you're going from low to high, quite often that might be a sign of sleep apnea, for example. And what I noticed throughout my many tests of the Fitbit Charge 3 and the Versa 2, I noticed that there's always a consistent kind of wavy line below the high threshold. So it's telling me that my sleep apnea or my sleep conditions are actually quite healthy. Now I actually tested this, these devices on people who don't or who are not diagnosed with sleep apnea and they actually pretty much have the same kind of wavy line that I did. No matter what, no matter what I did, if I used my CPAP therapy or didn't use my CPAP therapy, thereby causing sleep apneas, the same results kind of kept showing that there was no variation in my blood oxygen saturation. And that's great. Typically I would say, woohoo, I'm healthy. But when I compare this data to, let's say, for example, the better sleep tuner or the low key ring sleep monitor, I noticed that those devices actually detect some major drops in my blood oxygen saturation, unfortunately. So in conclusion, to me, the Fitbit Charge 3's relative SpO2 data has been more noise than any signal. I can't really action this data Despite having a full night's worth of data, there's not much valuable information that I can get from this and action on it. So in the end, I'm really happy that they enabled the SpO2 hardware, but I'm still disappointed that it doesn't really show any useful information. And I question whether it actually works, especially given how weak the red infrared sensor actually is. Now for my one year later kind of observation with the Fitbit Charge 3, after using it for quite some time, I noticed that there are some things that are really good about it and then some things that are actually really bad about it. And I wanna just kind of present my final thoughts about this and kind of wrap this up. Don't get me wrong, I still think the Fitbit Chart 3, given the form factor and given how well the, the operating system works and notifications and all that, I still think it's one of the best fitness trackers in 2020 still to this day, given the form factor. The Fitbit Chart 3 has first class fitness tracking, sleep tracking, and of course, awesome notifications. So the smart notifications work very well and it's one of the best on these types of smaller form factor type of devices. I'm still majorly disappointed that the Fitbit Charge 3 and all the other Fitbit fitness trackers and smart smartwatches do not have a proper rep counter or a weightlifting assistant. This type of feature already exists on the Wear OS and Garmin devices. Even on the tiniest, smallest Garmin devices, it has a rep counter. I don't know why Fitbit hasn't built this feature yet. I feel like it's something that should come native of all their devices. Another feature that I use quite often on my Garmin Vivo Smart 4 is the Find My Phone feature. I often misplace my phone and not having this feature on the Fitbit Charge 3 or even any other Fitbit devices to this day in 2020, there's no software update for it, is actually very disappointing. I don't know why this simple feature that kind of wakes up your phone, you know, using the Bluetooth connection of your watch, I don't know why this still does not exist. It seems like a very simple feature that they should implement because it gives a lot of value to their fitness trackers to wear 24 seven. Now, despite the poor results of the SpO2 sensor on Fitbit's fitness trackers, I still think sleep tracking is first class on all its devices. Particularly, I'm talking about the start and end sleep algorithm detection. I noticed on Garmin watches and fitness trackers that it might detect that you're actually sleeping when you're just kind of lying in bed. Also, Garmin doesn't have any nap detection, which is a real disappointment. So I still think that Fitbit fitness trackers and smartwatches have one of the best sleep detection algorithms in terms of assessing what time you start sleeping, what time you stop sleeping, and the deep sleep, REM sleep, and light sleep uh, detection. Unfortunately, there's no rumors or news about the next iteration of the Fitbit Charge. I feel like this recent event of the coronavirus has really put a halt on a lot of development of new technologies. It's really disappointing. I'm really hoping that they come up with a new version. And I really hope that they kind of implement those features that I'm talking about, such as the rep counter, the better SpO2 tracking, and a Find My Phone feature. Oh, and one more thing, it would be amazing if they could fit Alexa in the new Fitbit Charge series. That would be a game changer, having voice replies and a smart assistant on your watch on such a small fitness tracker. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this update on the Fitbit Charge 3 the, in terms of its SpO2 sensor and what I think about it one year later. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't seen the full review of the Fitbit Charge 3, 
definitely check it out. If this video helped you, please give a like and subscribe for more wearable content. See ya.